taking your time to take uh, to come to our talk show on action TV but before we start a few instructions first observe minimal movement second observe minimal silence third if you have to drink water do not put it on your laps put it beneath your seat Pod will be on Facebook, will be on Twitter, and will be sending text for you to engage in the conversation. For engagement on our Facebook page, kindly like our Facebook page at ActionAid Staff Retreat. On Twitter, kindly follow us on AAIK underscore retreat using the hashtag ALPS. You can also send your messages to, kindly note this down, please. Zero seven two one three six three six three three. I repeat that zero seven two one. Three six three six three three. Another number you can send in your contribution to zero seven two two six one six six nine one. <laughs> trying to understand what is out, what is accountability. But today we are privileged to get it from the experts with us here. And uh, we really hope that we, you will also contribute and engage with them so that we learn as much as, uh, as we can from the experts. My name is Lucy and my co-host. And I'm Michael Odumbe. And we thank you for choosing to stay with the Action TV, your channel of choice. And let me have this opportunity to introduce our distinguished panel for today. To our extreme left, a professor in OD, Organization <laughs> Development, our own Professor Nyambura Mbugwa. <laughs> the former MP for Kieli, and now the sitting MP for Naro. Our own. Thank you, good morning, viewers. Next to, her, next to him, all the way from Bungoma County, our own. Christine, Dr. Christine Osuka. <laughs> and all the way from Magarini University, our own Lawrence Machidudu, Dr. Lawrence. <laughs> okay, we go straight to the, the first topic, um, Dr. Professor Nyambura. It's a pleasure to have you here tonight, and we really do appreciate your work. Uh, you've done a lot of work with the girls and women just trying to impact uh, OD and accountability. And we are really privileged to have you. Uh, first, uh, let me just design what is accountability. I think it's quite simple if you put it that way. And uh, it must happen in a relationship. Uh, this relationship can either be uh, vertical or horizontal. And when you're looking at vertical relationships, we're looking at the state, we're looking at the state and we're looking at uh, its citizens, we're looking at uh, the leaders, we're looking at the communities. Uh, horizontally, we are looking at uh, relationships such as uh, within a marriage, uh, whether it's a man and a woman, uh, or partners. Uh, we are looking at colleagues, we are also looking at staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, for me, I think it's quite simple. It's about being answered. I, I hear you, Professor, and uh, two key words there. Mm -hmm. First is that account accountability means responsible use of power, mm -hmm. and two things that it exists in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But I want to take you further. Can you just tell us, why, why is this accountability important to us? I think accountability is important because mm. we must lead by example. 
Mm. Uh, we must be the example ourselves first mm. uh, before we go and seek that accountability out there. Um, I'm looking at uh, it being political. Mm. Uh, in that uh, the communities take us uh, to account uh, based on several things, mm. whether it's through uh, PRRPs or transparency boards or other thing, issues like that. And then we build the capacity and then they're able to go and uh, speak to the state uh, and seek accountability. Thank you, uh, Professor Nambura. Uh, just to pick it from there to uh, Honorable Kaku, uh, Nambura has spoken about being accountable to the state. And uh, as a city member of parliament, could you just tell us uh, which relationship we have and who we have to be accountable to? When we talk of uh, the issue of accountability, the first thing we asked about is this issue of poverty. It is very broad that you can't address it in isolation. It is very key to note that you have to work with the other strategic partners. You have to bring on board other partners from up. What I mean is that it has to be both internal and external. Internally we mean <coughs> Uh, the first thing that we have to have the donors, the supporters, and we also have the community and the partners that we work with. And in every step that we make in whatever we do, we have to report upwards to our donors and also to account to the community that we work with. Because addressing issue of the poverty, we must work as a team, not in isolation. And, uh, and I hear in the very critical point there that we have multiple accountabilities. But I just want to take you back on the issue of partnership. When you say we are accountable to our partners, what, what exactly do you mean? Uh, when we talk of partners, mm. as I said, we don't implement projects in isolation. Mm. Because if you do so, you end up having white elephant projects. What we should, uh, and that one is the thing which we should avoid. So the most important thing is for us to identify the strategic partners whom we must build mm -hmm. and incorporate in what we call project cycle. Light from inception, <coughs> implementation, monitoring and evaluation so that they can, be, they, they can be part of the whole process. Mm -hmm. They can also be accountable and they can also mm -hmm. agree with what we do report. And I want to, uh, to talk to Dr. Lawrence uh, uh, Machidudu. You've had uh, the multiple accountabilities that we have, but I want to take it uh, on a day-to-day -day interaction with our community. When you talk about accountability, how, how do you demonstrate How do you demonstrate this? Very easy to demonstrate accountability. Mm -hmm. And uh, because accountability is very key in our day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. And because community is not used to this kind of accountability, we have to instill it. Mm. And that is why we start to know or to discuss about accountability from the planning stage. Mm. We do plan with them. Mm. And as we are implementing, mm. we involve communities in mm. the PRRPs mm. or the planning and review meetings that we have. Mm. And why is it important for us to be accountable to them? It is because we raise funds through child sponsorship and also through communities. And that is why we should instill that culture of accountability. Mm. Why is it important for us to account for the funds that have raised? <coughs> Leave alone that, it is a time for them to say, what did we do well? What did we not do well? Mm. And what needs to be improved? Just outside the office, we have a transparency board, which outlines exactly mm. what is supposed to be implemented in any given year. Also, we make use of meetings with other stakeholders. We display our budgets. Mm. And because of that, now, during our day-to-day -day operations, we train social auditors. Mm. And these social auditors now also look for accountability from the other stakeholders. Here we are talking, for example, the Constituent Development Fund. Mm. They now demand for accountability from them. And that is what we say, in a way, doing social auditing is a way of empowering communities to demand for accountability from the other duty bearers. Mm. Thank you, Doctor. I know that's uh, for the sake of our viewers, I know uh, recently we saw you demonstrating on TV.
because she wanted that. Do you just want to tell us how that happened, how, how it came to be? After training the social, social auditors, they now demanded for accountability. Mm. And they went straight to the constituency development fund. Mm. They went to do 100% verification or utilization of constituency development fund. Mm. After knowing that there are so many loopholes, they went to bad pardon the duty bearers. Here were the fund managers. Mm. When they didn't get good response, they took that case now to court. Currently, we have a court case against their member of parliament. And, and, and I want to take it back uh, to Dr. Gakuo. Uh, in your experience in Kenya, can you also give us a, an instance where you are able to, to empower community to, you know, to hold the state to account? Uh, I'll pick on a quick one. Mm. Uh, in Kenya, when I was the member of parliament, we did work with Action Aid Kenya. Mm. And there is one very important approach they used, which I borrowed mm. and implemented in my programming. Mm. One of them is participatory review and reflection of the work done. Mm. And it happened that we involved the one good engineer Nicodemus mm. to explain to the community the process mm. of uh, constructing a classroom. And they would be told the cost of constructing a classroom right from the excavation, laying of the foundation, mm. and the concretion. And we agreed that the cost of one classroom is one million. So when some other officers from the Ministry of Education claimed theirs would cost two million, mm. the community had all the facts, and they went into Nairobi and reported them, and things were checked. development partners, it's important to share that so that it permeates with the communities and just bring the communities together. Um, um, uh, Christine, uh, thank you very much for coming. Just a, a question is, uh, as, as staff members of the uh, development organizations like Action, uh, what processes, how do, what does it mean to us to just be accountable? Thank you, Lucy. For one, to be accountable as an organization, it means that we have an obligation because we are hired to perform a duty. And that one is accountability because you have been hired to perform a duty. Mm -hmm. Second, you are there to support somebody perform her or his duty. So you must be supportive to that person to perform the duty. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, mm -hmm. in accountability, we always think of the monetary value. But there are other things that are most essential in accountability than money. Mm -hmm. That is time. How do we, as actual staff, use our time to be accountable? The other thing is that when we produce our reports, how timely are the reports? And also we put in the quality. If you put in the time, what is the quality of the reports we are sending in? The other thing, we have to support the partners to be accountable. And if we are to support the partners to be accountable, we first have to be accountable ourselves. In the question of time, in the question of uh, time the reports. And when we write emails to the field partners, how are we being supportive to them? Do we just send emails and let it be at that? Do we make a follow-up for the emails to be responded? Mm. And are the emails responsible? If they are responsible, how effective are our feedbacks to the emails? Mm. The last thing is, if you send an email, expect a feedback. But if you are also receiving the email, make a phone call back to ensure that the person who is sending the feedback mm. gets the answer that you are not within network, mm. so that you can send in the email when you are in the office. Don't always take things for granted. We need to be accountable with the time, well spoken, uh, Dr. And I want to take it back uh, to the professor. We, we've heard that uh, two concepts of accountability. We are talking about uh, political accountability, but we're also talking about uh, management accountability. 
But I, I want to bring in the issue of attitudes, attitudes and behavior of staff. Uh, what, what, what is your take on this? Um, my take on this is that uh, we need to be responsible uh, as employees within the organizations that we have uh, been employed in. Mm. And I think we have to have a positive attitude mm. because you have decided to be part of that organization. So if you've decided to be part of that organization, you need to have the right attitude to deliver mm. on what you've been asked to do within that organization. Mm. Now, if you do find that it's contrary mm. to what you believe in, mm. then probably it's time to step out of such an organization. But we do not require the wrong, the wrong attitude within an organization mm. because it will put the whole uh, team in jeopardy. Yeah. So for me, I think it's very critical that we have the right behaviors within an organization. Just to add on that, mm. we're actually being an organization that has respect for women. Mm. We have to do a deliberate move to target women and girls mm. so as to accomplish our core value of respect of women and children. Mm. Uh, very, very, very critical there. Uh, I just want to take it back uh, to Lawrence Machidudu. When you're, talking, uh, when you're talking about relating with the community and we're talking about this issue of power, how, how, how do we exercise power when we relate with the, uh, the community that we work with? Thank you, Mike. That is very critical, how we use power. Mm. Because we might run an extent of having power, and in doing that, mm. actually, it's like we're lemming the communities. We are supposed to dispel that power, so that we also be able to demand accountability. Mm. So it is so important that we also mm. nurture communities from you in as far as when you talk about accountability where does the bug stop and this is mainly in reference to within live alone externally but within yourselves do you demand more accountability from those that are under do we have a bottom bottom down accountability or only expect a bottom-up accountability. Thank you. Based on what we see, in some situation we do a downward demand, but sometimes we don't do an upward demand. But the reality is, if you really want accountability to work, it must function across. It must function across, it must be a relationship that binds people across to really account. And basically, if one part is accountable and the other part is not accountable, then you are just creating a scenario. I just wanted to throw in something for your reason. And basically, most effective organizations function because they place accountability at the lowest level possible. Not at the highest level possible. This is controversial. Because I know within hierarchy cost structures, basically accountability is placed at the highest level. And what am I trying to say? If there is a task to be done, and that decision can be made at the lowest level. Execution can be done at that level. Let it be so. And ultimately, whoever is at the top accountable will hold the rest to account for their actions. And that way, you have a more, much, much more efficient, lean, and functional institution. I just wanted to end my conclusion on that point. Uh, as we discuss accountability, we just need to appreciate that uh, accountability relationships are riddled with a lot of power relations. So as we discuss uh, top down, okay, upward, downwards, or downwards, upwards accountability, we need to look at, uh, if we need to, for example, give feedback to 
say a supervisor about the way they are behaving, the way they are facilitating processes for us to be able to deliver. We need to reflect on uh, the power relations between the junior staff and the senior staff and therefore utilize mechanisms that um, appreciate the fact that there are power relations within uh, that accountability relationship. Thank you. And I think it is important at whatever level in an organization to just be open about particular decisions that are being made so that everyone within that organization is aware of what is going on. To start with, uh, I think the first question that came from the, the audience is about where do we place monitoring and evaluation in accountability? And I want to direct this uh, to Dr. Francis. Uh, thank you, Martha. Uh, m and &E, monitoring and evaluation, mm. is very key to our work. Yeah. Because it will enable you to get the learning that you have acquired in implementing that particular program or the project. You should be able to use the same to report to the donors internally and also report to, to the partners that you work with, the community, and they will be able to pick the learnings, the success stories, and it will be, in, uh, it will be used at another level in order to enrich the programs that we do have. m and &E is another very key tool because it will enable you to get to know about the issue of the challenges that you encounter and try to re-strategize so that to address that particular issue that you are really addressing with the target uh, community. Uh, thank, you. Okay, thank you, Professor. There was a question about uh, our transparency board. What are transparency boards supposed to do, uh, Dr. Christine? Thank you, Lucy. Our transparency boards are supposed to act as moderators and we are also supposed to use the transparency boards not only to be accountable for us as actually but we must also use them in other organizations like we are here at the meetings what are we going to do outside there when we go for other meetings like stakeholders meetings we need to carry the learning from our transparency board so that the other organizations can also learn from what we are doing we have to save what we have I think the third question that we had is about how are we accountable to women as an organization? And I want to direct this to uh, Professor Jambura Mbubo. Please, uh, can, can you just uh, uh, help us understand how we are accountable to women? Okay. Um, various organizations, uh, I have seen as a professor, um, mm. have various ways they are accountable to women. Mm. I'm aware of uh, one, one organization like Actually, uh, mm. which I have heard from a colleague, so mm the fraternity, uh, who has said what they've done for women uh, within the organization in, in terms of policies that are related to women, uh, increasing the months uh, that women go on maternity leave from three to four, because I know the government gives three, and the, that organization gives four months. I'm aware that uh, they also give opportunity for women who are breastfeeding uh, within the first year of a child's uh, life. Uh, span. Um, they give two hours off and uh, there's also flexi time. Uh, they also give opportunities in their retreat, uh, retreats, which I thought was very good uh, for uh, such uh, uh, workers to come with their nannies and their children to such a setting. And I think it's really, really good. Uh, among many others, which are, are there within our policies, and I think those are, are key within our organization. <laughs> Is that, uh, in action aid, our programs are tailor made to suit women. We, ta we do a deliberate target to target women to improve their livelihoods, to improve their capacities, to build them in every other forum that we have, so that we have to really target women to come up deliberately. Mm. Messages coming in uh, through text, uh, through Twitter, and uh, a very interesting viewer here is asking. Uh, as an organization, and I want to take this uh, to Professor Nyambura Mbugwa, have we been accountable in our organizational processes and decision making in terms of procurement, recruitment, and financial management? <laughs> Thank you very much for that question. Yeah. Um, I, I think accountability uh, is to be uh, within an organization. There is management and there is staff, and we are all part of one team. 
And so uh, we check each other, and uh, there are checks and balances from staff, from management, from ourselves as a team. And, and so within our policies and our guidelines, yes, there are challenges that come in uh, within accountability. And where we find issues, uh, <laughs> where we find issues, uh, we do deal with them according to the policies that have been laid down uh, within the organization. So I believe uh, we have been accountable because uh, we are checked by the audit, external audit, mm. and I think we we'll even came out of risk as, as an organization. So mm. I believe we've been accountable. Uh, and and this is I think it's important just to, there is another question, thank you Nimbura for that. There is another question on accountability to our donors. And one is asking um, how is actually accountable to donors when you are able to, uh, to where, when we are unable, unable to spend all funds, whereas community is still in poverty, when we are returning money. And you want to take that to, uh, to Dr. Lawrence. Please, please help us understand this. Thank you so much. Yes. That's a difficult question to answer, but I, I will try as much as you can, because that is, those are some of the challenges that you are facing as an organization. And uh, we always have to look at our internal capacities to deliver. And that is why always we review our internal processes to see which is the best way so that we can be able to remedy this situation. Yeah. And believe me, we are working on a transitional process that you and me are part of the process. We are working towards ensuring that we spend all the funds that are given to us so that we can become as accountable as possible and I think give us one year, we shall be able to be there. And, and uh, there's a friend here from uh, all the way uh, from uh, uh, Malindi is asking, what about the boy child? And I want to take this uh, to Dr. Francis, please. L help us understand. Uh, How about the boy, child, the boy child? Yes. Uh, let me hope uh, that is not a coincidence because I come from Nyeri County where uh, the boy <laughs> child has been uh, threatened now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the first thing that I would like to talk about is that when I was the member of parliament, I'll first go back to a question from one Jane uh, who asked about the issue of partnership. Mm. And I'll be quick to answer that and say that in my case, I did categorize them into two. Mm. One is the citizen, and then we have the, the government. Uh, in the development world, we'll use different uh, terms. The right holder, who are the citizens, and the duty bearer, who are the governments. We are able to have a forum together with them. Mm. In this case, they could understand what is expected of the citizens and how they should work with. Because there were many issues that the citizens could not understand mm. that were going on. They could only receive building much room out there. They don't know the cost. They don't know the purposes. Mm -hmm. They were not involved in the feasibility study. Mm -hmm. So upon coming together as partners and our donors, we were able to agree that we'll be carrying out those activities together, right from the feasibility studies, mm -hmm. inception and implementation and everything. Mm -hmm. And it worked because thereafter there is no dispensary that was put up without government employing nurses. No classroom was constructed without teachers because of sustainability purposes. And it has really worked well. In my community, I can, uh, in my constituency, I can proudly report that every sub-location, there is a well-equipped secondary school. There is a well-equipped dispensary in every location. So it can work well. So the other one, we talked about the boy child. Boy child, yes. Uh, it is key because uh, mm -hmm. where I come from, a study which was carried out is, has shown that about 30% of the boys, they are not going to school. Simply because there is a serious issue in part of the central that the boys are seen to have been forgotten. But we are really talking of the father figures from those areas. What happened to them? They have learned away from le their responsibilities. So we are coming, coming up with programs that are really bringing boys closer and creating some confidence, instilling confidence in them so that they can accept that they can go back and they are needed in the community. So we are coming, we have the program of instilling confidence in them. 
and trying to get them out of uh, the streets where they are so that they can go back to school. And we retain them in schools so that they can grow to be responsible citizens. I just want to ask something. Why, why is the focus on the job now? And uh, where I'm coming from, it's so important to focus on the girl child because the girl child has been neglected. And it's also important when we empower the girl child, now the boys also strive to achieve even higher aims. And that is why we are saying that this can be a twist in terms of how communities uh, go on with their day-to-day -day activities. For example, if the girl child is not well educated, the boy child will also not struggle to be well educated because they know, after all, I'll be able to get a girl within the community. But if the girl child is well educated, we won't be seeing there's so many border borders who do not complete even class eight. And we are setting the standard for the girl high so that the boys can also uplift their standard. I think, uh, <laughs> It's the girl child who is more vulnerable. So we want to build the capacity of that vulnerable one. So that when this one comes up, the one who is unvulnerable will also pick up from there. But if we build the capacity of the vulnerable ones, the unvulnerable ones will not be there. So we are specifically targeting the girl who is vulnerable to come up. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for the contribution. We are running short of time and uh, we will rest it there for now. But what we will do, we will read all your questions. A lot of questions of in, on internal accountability. And I think that's one thing that we just have to discuss in the plenary. Uh, we will ensure that we meet. So for now, I think we let our guest go. Unless there's a burning thing that you want to tell the audience here. And you have your one minute. And I think probably they, before they leave, uh, closing arguments, closing arguments uh, uh, from Professor. Uh, what, what, uh, you've, uh, you've heard what uh, the discussions are coming from the crowd about accountability. Uh, what, what, what are your last words? Uh, what do you take home with us when you're talking about accountability? I think what I would want the, the viewers to go home with mm. is, is that understanding of accountability is being answerable. Mm. And you realizing that this must happen in a relationship. And, and understanding that within an organization, uh, there also those relationships are there, and we need to be accountable. There are documents that guide us on how we can be accountable within organizations, mm. and therefore we need to heed these uh, organization documents, mm. like policies and other guidelines, mm. because we have stated that that's where we want to be in that organization as a staff, and therefore we need to be part of that team. So those are my questions. Doctor. Uh, For me, accountability starts with me. It has to be something intrinsic, must be internal, and you should also set out the same externally. Account internally as well as externally. for you people is that accountability is not only money. But can you try to account for the time you are using within the organization? In my name, to emphasize our accountability to the children we are working with, to the communities we are working with, because we are raising funds through the communities. So let us be accountable to them. Thank you, panelists. We wish you all the best. Have a great day.